Welcome to this teaching. Today I'm going to talk about knowledge, obedience and discipleship. The problem today in the churches is that we don't make disciples the way Jesus did it. We think that if people just receive a lot of teaching, then they will end up obeying what they have heard. But it's not like that. Just look in the churches. Today we have many people who have a lot of knowledge. But when it comes to obedience, then their obedience is down here somewhere. But our obedience and our knowledge should somehow be the same. But why is that knowledge out here, up here, and the obedience down here? Because they are filled with a lot of fear. And fear is the problem in the church today. We are filled with a lot of fear because nobody has shown us, trained us, how to obey Jesus. We have only heard about it, but nobody has shown us. And I think this teaching is very important for the church today. And it's very important for you and it's going to help you to understand what it's all about and how you can come in to the life we read about in the book of Acts. So God bless you. Welcome to this teaching. This is the fourth teaching out of 20 on our Pioneer School and I look forward to share this word for you. I'm going to talk about obedience, I'm going to talk about knowledge and discipleship. And the teaching today is somehow a foundation I want to lay because later in the next teaching I'm going to talk about healing and then we're going to kickstart you and we're going to take it from there. But before I'm going to continue with the teaching, it's important to know that it's not just about getting more knowledge. It's not, so, not just about getting more teaching. It's about obedience. It's about acting on what we already know. And this teaching is important as a foundation. So I, I look forward to share this word for you. Uh, just to say what I've been speaking about on to now. In the first teaching, I spoke about some church history. We had like the book of Acts, that was like what we read in the book of Acts, the, the normal Christianity, where you read about how they live, how they love Jesus, how they are led by the Holy Spirit. And then a lot of things happened with the Catholic Church and we got the whole church system where Christianity changed a lot. We, the power went out and instead we got our system, we got control. And, and we got our church system that's so far away from what Jesus came with. And then we got the reformation with Martin Luther. And it, but it was not a reformation back to the book of Acts. It was just a small change here and there, especially when it comes to theology. And after that, we have seen all of these small revivals, uh, big revivals where God reveals something new every time. But every church today somehow looked like the Lutheran church, who again looked like the Catholic church. Because we still need to see a great reformation, the last reformation of the church, where we are going to go back and see what we read in the book of Acts. And it was some of the first things I spoke about. In the next lesson, I spoke about that we are the temple of God. You are the temple of God. So, so you can go to a church on Sunday. Yes, you can do that. But you are not a less a church on Monday or Tuesday or Wednesday. You are the church. I am the church. And we are all priests. So you don't have to be ordained by our organization to baptize people, to do the things the Bible says. Because when you got saved, Jesus called you. He sent you out and there he ordained you with everything you need. 
Because when you got born again, you received the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is the same Spirit that raised Jesus up from the dead. He is inside of you. So when you have received that, you don't need to go to a lot of meeting to receive more anointing. Because there is not more to receive. There is not more to receive. In the New Testament, when you talk about the anointing, it always refers to the Holy Spirit. And when we have the Holy Spirit, we have everything. We have every gift inside the Holy Spirit. And worship service is not just to go and do something Sunday morning. It's to present our life as an offer to God Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and so on. So it was some of the things I spoke about in the second lesson. And this is really important teaching. Last time I spoke about the book of Acts. That uh, the book of Acts is just a small, small, small picture of some of the disciples' life. And I believe that you could write a whole book of Acts about, an, uh, about the first 3,000 who got saved from Pentecost. And I believe that this is the normal Christianity. So you somehow should write a book of Acts about your life if you are born again. And your life and my life should look like what we read in the book of Acts. Because the book of Acts is not about the first apostles, it's about the Holy Spirit inside of a believer. So this is some of the things I've been speaking about until now. That we are disciples of Jesus and we are like an ambassador for Christ. We are sent here on earth to show the world who Jesus is. We are here to be the body of Christ. And that is not only in our words, that is our deeds, that is in our life, that is in our power. So this is some of the things I've been speaking about on to now. And today I'm going to continue with laying a foundation and give you some teaching that can help you to come into this life I've been talking about. Uh, but before I'm going to start, I just want to pray. God, I thank you for this day. I thank you because you're going to... Help me to share this word, God. And you're going to help everybody who's seen this video, God. I pray that you're going to open their eyes, God. So they can see who you are and what you have for them. You're going to open their ears, God, so they can hear you. That You're going to open your heart, their hearts so they can receive everything you have, God. God, come with your Holy Spirit and work through this teaching. Help me to share what you want me to share, God. I need you. We need you. So I ask you to help me in the name of Jesus. Amen. I want to say I'm, I'm really excited of what is happening already during the first three lessons. I have received so many testimonies. And I can see that this is setting, setting people free. It's setting people free so they are starting to live the life we read in the Bible. And, and I get so many testimonies. I get a testimony every day of people who start to pray for sick people, who people who have led people to Christ, people who have baptized people, and how this teaching has set people free. One of the uh, person who wrote to me have made his own video. And I have that on my website, and, and I think you should see it. Because here we have a man who has been living with God, but he has never experience those things you read in the Bible. But during this teaching on the Bible school and during our videos, he just went out to do it. And he saw people got healed. And he was in India, and there he saw people got healed. One, two, three, four. They just got healed. And you see, he's so happy. He's so excited. The life is bubbling up in him. And out there he meets Jesus. Out there he experienced somehow he felt like for, that he's forgiven for his sin. Out there he experienced how God is changing him. And he was fighting with some doubt before, but out there everything changed. And the day after he made a new video and sent it to me. And I put some of the, from the two videos together to one video so you can see a little of it. And the day after he was out again. And out there he met a woman who had been in a temple, a Hindu temple, and there she felt like something, a demon came into her, and she felt really bad. He had never tried before to cast out a demon, but he just did it. He just laid his hand and he commanded this demon to leave her, and the demon left her. 
seek herself free. And you see the smile and like, whoa, in her face after she had got delivered, after she had got set free. And he met some people who could not stop smoking and pray for them and they also got free. And this man is changed now. And I believe this is the beginning of a lot of new things in him. For many other people. I believe during this Bible school, he's also going to learn to preach the gospel away where people are getting saved. He's going to learn to cast out or to let people to Christ and baptize them with the Holy Spirit. He's going to learn to baptize people in water. And I believe that he's going to learn to come into an even deeper relationship with God. When I'm going to talk about not knowing God, I'm going to talk about prayer fast, I'm going to talk about holiness. But what this man did was he took the first step. He just went out acting on the word of God. And because he did that, he saw things happen. And there's many people who, f who have a lot of knowledge, but they don't do what he did. Because they think that they need more knowledge. They think that they have to be ready. They think that they have to be perfect before they do it. But you don't have to have all knowledge. You don't have to be perfect before you act on the word of God. Because discipleship is something that starts and continues. Continue and continue. A step after each other. We don't have to be perfect before we can serve God. Because when we start to serve God where we are right now, then we are going to grow. And then we are going to experience how God is working in us, how Jesus is closed by his Holy Spirit. And he's going to deal with all the other things in our life also. So I think you, you see this video I put on the website so you can see it. And I encourage you to just do the same he's doing. Just go out, act on the word of God. And again, I love what God is doing. Amazing. We, I can sit here in, in, in Denmark, make some teaching, and then people all over the world is starting to go out on the word of God and act on it. And I see there's so many people in the church who is so hungry for this life. They are so hungry and they want it. But because of the church system, the mindset, they are somehow bound they are not free to go out on the word of God. And a simple teaching like I have done, the last three lessons have already set many people free. And because of that, I hear a lot of testimonies right now. But we are going to continue because there is more we need to change to come into the life we read in the book of Acts. We are going to continue now. The Catholic Church, many things changed during that time. And on the Sunday meeting they have, the mass, the church meeting, there we have the communing as the center. But during the Reformation that changed, so now it became the teaching that's the center of the worship meeting. And uh, Martin Luther was really like, he, he spoke a lot about the pulpit, the teaching, that this is like the most important thing in Christianity, the teaching. And that foundation is what we are building on today. If you ask people here about a meeting, they always refer to the teaching because the teaching is the most important thing. But I want to say that teaching is not the most important thing. What? No, teaching is not the most important, especially not the way we do teaching today. Because when we look, look at Jesus, and you, we're going to do that later, we are going to see that Jesus did it very different than we did it. He started with like, come and follow me, and I show you, I train you. Jesus didn't stand on a pulpit and have a teaching to his disciples. No, his teaching was not so much teaching. His teaching was more life. Of course, there was a lot of words but it was life living together. And because our mindset is so focused on teaching, we think if we just continue with teaching, then people in the end will look more like Jesus. But teaching in itself is not going to change the church. Teaching is not going to change people. 
teaching is going to give a lot of knowledge. But often what we need, especially also in the West, is not a lot of knowledge. We need a lot of obedience. And I'm going to explain what I mean. If I talk about knowledge, knowledge, we in the West somehow have a lot of knowledge. We know a lot of things. But where is our obedience? Is our obedience the same as our knowledge? So what we know, we also do? No. Our knowledge is up there, but our obedience is down there somewhere. We have a lot of knowledge, but a little obedience. I can give you an example. If we take like the how church movement in China, and then we are going to ask Christian to some people from their church in China and some people from the West. And I'm going to ask questions about Christianity, about the Book of Acts, about theology. Do you think that the people from China know most or the people from the West? When it comes to theology, when it comes to church history. I believe the people from the West know more. Because many people from the church in China, especially in the beginning when it grew a lot, they didn't have the whole Bible. They, they just have some letters here and there and, and somebody came and had the Bible and they were sharing the Bible. So their knowledge was not exactly the same as many of us in the church today. But when it comes to obedience, when it comes to actually acting on the word of God, taking the cross, follow Jesus, repent, go out, heal the sick, cast out demons, preach the gospel, start new churches, do what Jesus had commanded us to do. The people in the house church movement in China is going to win compared to us in the West. So our obedience and our knowledge is greater than many other people, but our obedience is very, very low. And that has to do with the whole way of doing church we are doing today. Because we think it's all about knowledge. So each of those people, churches here focus on the same thing, teaching, 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 teaching. So every pastor today, he has to be a good teacher because everything is focused about teaching. And we hear a lot of teaching, and because we hear a lot of teaching, we know a lot. But our obedience is down there, because it's one thing to know, it's another thing to actually do it. And we have to understand that if we want to change our life, if we want to see people's life changed, it's not enough that we only give them a lot of knowledge. What we have to help them with is obeying what they hear. Because it's doing obedience we are getting changed. We are not getting changed by knowledge, we are getting changed by the obedience. And I'm going to explain and you're going to see everything later. I just want to take one step at a time here. And often our problem, again, is that we build our theology out of Jesus' words. For example, next time we're going to look at Luke 10, 9, where Jesus is saying, heal the sick and preach the gospel. When we talk about that verse, only one verse, Jesus called his disciples, go out, heal the sick and preach the gospel. What we often do today because of our glasses, our mindset, we take that simple word and instead of just acting on the word, instead of just doing the word, we start to build theology out of that word. Do we really mean that? Or how? maybe if we do it that way instead, maybe it was on this and maybe a lot of other things. I can give you an example how this is working. How often have people not been on a meeting on Sunday and they hear the word 
and they come home and drink coffee. And then they talk about the meeting. And what do they often talk about? Whoa, it was really a good sermon. It was a good meeting. It was really a good way he presented the word. And, and, and he had some good jokes. It was really good. Or, oh, I don't like that. I think it was too long meeting. Or maybe he should have, have, have shot it down. And maybe he should have done it this way. So often we talk about the way it's being presented. We often talk about what he spoke about instead of, okay, what, how do we do what he said? How do we actually take this word and do it in practice? How do we obey this word? We don't talk about that today. It's not like we go home and say, oh, it was a good word. Let's do it. Let's go out and do it. No. I can give you another example. I've, I have uh, three, boy, uh, three children, one boy and two girls. My girl is uh, nine and twelve. If I said to my girls, hey, you have to go in and clean your room right now because we have guests who's coming tonight. So go in, clean your room. If then they go and clean, uh, to clean their room, I expect them to clean their room because it was what I commanded, not commanded, but said that they should do. If they come back like a half hour later and say, hey, daddy, and I say, yes, now we have memorized what you have told us. I said, what? We have memorized what you told us. You told us, go clean your room. We are going to have guests tonight. And I'm like, have you cleaned your room? No, no, but we have memorized it. Yeah, but go clean your room. I didn't say it to them, so they should memorize me. Or what if they come back later and say, hey, daddy, now we have learned it in Greek. Now we can say it in Greek. Go clean your room because we have guests tonight. No. They shouldn't, I don't say to them that they could, should go clean their room because they had to memorize it or be, because they had to learn it in Greek. I told them to go clean the room because they need to clean their room. Or what if they come back later and say, hey, daddy, now we have a paper here with 10 different ways of cleaning our room. So we have sit down and we have write 10 different ways how to clean our room. But they have still not clean it. What would I as a parent react on this? I would be like angry. <laughs> I said, come on, go clean your room. I, because I didn't told them to go and clean the room because they have to memorize it, because they have to go and learn it in Greek or, or because they have to take my words and share it and do he really mean that and how can we do it? I told them to do it because I want them to do it. And, to, and, and as a parent, I don't care if they start clean the room that way, or they start that way, or they do it that way. I just want the room to get clean. But us today, out of Jesus' word, we have got a mindset where we think he told us to do the things so we can memorize it, we could learn it in, in, in Greek, we could write books about it, we could do a lot of things, uh, talk about it and be together Sunday after Sunday and talk about what he was saying. But do we do it? No. We don't act on it. And because we don't act on it, <laughs> we are deceiving ourselves. Life is not getting changed. And I can tell you that uh, example. I have a chapter in my book, The Last Reformation, where I talk about the two mirrors in the Bible. And I can read for 2 Corinthians 3.18. There I read, but, but we all with unveiling face, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, and being transformed into the same image from glory to glory. Here is talking about Moses and the history, but what I want to take out of this is here is somebody, he's talking about somebody who's beholding in a mirror and are seeing the glory of Lord, the Lord in that mirror. And this person is being transformed 
after the same image he sees from glory to glory. But there is also another place you read about a mirror in the Bible. And it is, this is in the book of James, chapter 1, verse 22, and I read, But be doers on the word, and not hearers only, deceiving yourself. For if anyone is a hearer of the word, and not a doer, he is like a man observing his natural face in a mirror. For he observed himself, goes away, and immediately forgot what kind of man he was. But he who look into the perfect law of liberty and continues in it, in it and is not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the word, he, this one is blessed in what he does. And I want to explain what the word is saying here. It's talking about a mirror. The first man here, he's looking into a mirror and you read that He's getting transformed into the image he sees from glory to glory. But here we also have a man who's looking into a mirror. But he, this man, he goes away and has immediately forgot what he saw. So there is no transform. He's not getting transformed, this man, by the image he sees. What is the image? We are seeing this is the law of God, this is the word of God, the Bible. So one man is looking into the perfect law of God, the word of God, and he's getting transformed by the image he sees. He come to look more like Christ. But here there is a man who's also looking into the mirror. And I believe it's the same mirror he's looking into. But he goes away and have immediately forgot what he saw. How often have you not been in a meeting? You hear the word, but you go away and Monday morning, somebody asks you, was a good meeting yesterday? Yes, it was. What did he talk about? <laughs> uh, I forgot. How many meetings have you not been on during your life where you hear something, but some weeks later you have forgot it? Why is it like that? Because we forget so much what we only hear. But when we do the word, then it's different. Then we're not going to forget. Then we are going to get transformed. Because this is what James is talking about. But be doers on the word, not only hearers, deceiving yourself. How do we deceive ourselves? Yes, we deceive ourselves by thinking that if you go to meetings Sunday after Sunday and listen to teaching again and again and again and don't act on it, then you're going to get changed. No. You're deceiving yourself if you think that teaching alone is going to change your life. Teaching alone is going to give you a lot of knowledge. But be to get a transformed life, to be blessed by God, as the word is saying, you have to put obedience to that knowledge. You have to act on what you already he know, on what you hear. But we have a mindset, a church culture today. So if you want to go to a Bible school, what do you do on a Bible school? You sit down and you study the word. And after some years on a Bible school, you have a lot of knowledge. But have you learned to heal the sick, cast out demons? Do you actually do what you know? Or do you only have a lot of knowledge? And that's why we continue the same we are doing year after year, year after year, year after year. And we don't understand why people is not getting changed. People are not getting changed because they don't have knowledge. Of course, some people need knowledge. Good teaching, good knowledge, I don't say that. But people are not getting changed because they don't act on what they already know. This man in the video you saw, uh, the man from India, he just act on the simple truth. He went out and when he went out, 
the word became alive in his life. Then God started to change his life because he acted on it. He acted on it. Often, when I'm out having a meeting, I often take these examples. I ask people to think of a strong experience they have with God, a, a time where somehow God used them, where they did something for God, where God healed through them, where God did something in them. And, and I ask people to raise their hand, and people do that. And then I ask them, the thing you are thinking of, how long time ago is that? And people, some say last year, and some say 10 years ago, some say last month, some say 20 years. So people remember things they experienced and did 20 years ago, when God used them in an amazing way. But if I ask the same people, what did the pastor speak about last Sunday? They don't remember. Or what about three weeks ago? What about last summer camp? How much do you remember? I have been on many meetings during my life, and it's so little I remember out of the meetings. And to be honest, my life has not been changed by sitting and listening to meetings. My life has been changed by reading the simple word of God. But not only read it, then act on it. Because when I read it and acted on it, then the word became life in me. And then it changed me. And then I understood that it's not only about theology, it's about life. So if I read the book of James, be doers on the words, not hearers only, because then you deceive yourself. Because if you don't act on the word, you are like a man who's listening to the word of God. But when you go away, you have immediately forgot what you heard. But he end up, if you do the words, you will be blessed by that. You will be blessed by doing it. And that is why Jesus did it very different than we do it today. We have a church system where Martin Luther came with the word and during his mindset, we have like the pulpit is the most important thing. If people just hear the teaching, everything is going to be good. But we have people who listen Sunday after Sunday, meeting after meeting, but after many years, they are not transformed. They still live in sin. They still live in obedience. They don't go out on the word of God to heal the sick. They don't preach the gospel that Jesus called them to. They don't act on the word. They have a lot of knowledge. They've been sitting at meeting in 13 years, but life is not getting changed. Because they don't get changed by just getting more knowledge. And Jesus, when he called his disciples to follow him, he didn't do it the way we do it. He did it very different, but because of our glasses, we, can, we don't see that. For some, if I read uh, Matthew 28, where he said, Go out, make disciples of all nations, baptize them in the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, in the name of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe or obey everything I've commanded you. When you read that, teaching them to obey everything I've commanded. When you read teaching, in our classes, in our mindset, we think teaching, stand on our pulpit and teach with words. But Jesus didn't build, have a pulpit and stand behind that and teaching his follower. No. So when Jesus said teaching them, the right translation show how to our understanding should be showing them. Showing them to obey everything I command. Because it was what Jesus did. He said, follow me and I will make you f fishers of men. Follow me. And another place in Luke, he's saying here, a disciple, I'm going to talk about apprentice, is not above his master, but anyone who is perfect, trained, will be like his master. I'm going to talk about this. 
So Jesus said, come and follow me and I will make you a fisherman. Come and follow me. See what I do and then do the same as me. The word was disciple of Jesus. We are called to be a disciple of Jesus, to be a a apprentice of Jesus. Because the word disciple is more like an apprentice. Somebody who takes an apprenticeship and follow the master. First time the word disciple appears in the Bible, in one of our Danish Bible where there is, there is a word explaining what the word disciple come out from. And I read here, in those days teaching often involves following a master and learning from his example. A disciple is rather an apprentice than a student. That is why the disciples and other people often call Jesus master. I read that again. Those days in the Bible, teaching was like following a master and learning by his example. So a disciple is rather a rep apprentice than it is a student. But what do we do with that today? We teach like a student. People sit down, sit and listen to a lot of knowledge. But we are called to make disciples the way Jesus did it, the way the first disciple did it. Come and follow me and I show you how to do it. Come and follow me and I will make a disciple out of you. And then you become like your master. This is what it's all about. Example, electrical. If you want to become an electrical, for example, how do you become an electrical? Yes, there is a little school today, but you don't become an electrical by sitting in a school just teaching and reading books. No, at the school you also learn things. But you don't become an electrical at school. You become an electrical by taking Get in a job, follow your master, and then you are in like a disciple or apprentice with your master. And he take you out and he show you, you see how he do the things. And then he said, now it's your turn. Do it. No, 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 not that way. Do it that way. And then you learn to do it. And after some time, you become like your master. You are finished and now you are electrical and you can get new students and you can train and disciple them to become electrical. This is what it's all about. Jesus says a disciple is a apprentice is not above his master, but everyone who is perfectly trained will be like his master. Out in the real world today, if you want to be an electrical, uh, one who builds houses, one who do different kind of works, you become that not by sitting reading books about it. You become it by following somebody who shows you how to do it and then you learn by doing it. And in the end, you are finished. You become like your master. It's like that today, because this is the only thing that works. And it was the way Jesus did it. But do we do that in church today? No. We do it in, the way we do it in church today is very different. We have people who come and they listen to teaching. We teach them, but do we show them anything? No. We show them how to teach. And that's why we have people today who's good to teach him. But they cannot live the life. They cannot heal the sick, cast out demons. They don't obey Jesus. They just stand behind a puppet and teach. This is what they're good to because this is what they have learned. And because of that, we have a church today who's filled up with something. Who's filled up with fear. Because if you have a lot of knowledge 
and nobody shows you how to do and you don't have any obedience behind that knowledge, you start to experience a lot of fear. And I can give, give an example from, from the real life. Try to imagine an electrica here who did it very different. He went to a school where he get a book about electrical work. And like, nice, electrical work, ABC. And he starts to read through the book about electrical work. After four years, he had read through the whole book about electrical work. And he had really studied the book. He had memorized a lot of verses in the book. So he know a lot of things about electrical work. He know a lot of things, but he has still not done, done it. But then he's finished and they say to him, here's a telephone, now you have a job as an electrical. And he said, thank you, he get the telephone. And then somebody is calling him. Hello, I have an oven who don't work. Can you come and look at my oven? And he's like, okay, okay, I, I will be there. But now he's alone. It's Monday afternoon. Nobody around him. Nobody to show him how he do it. He have never tried this before. He have a lot of knowledge, but he have never tried it. So he come in, an old lady, hello, this is my oven, it don't work. And then he sees the oven and this is an old oven. He has never seen an oven like that before. He have only read about electrical work, but he have never seen it. What is this man going to do? He's going to go away, fill up with fear. He's afraid because he has never done it before. But you don't become an electrical that way. You don't become everything that way. No. Because in the real world, this man would read something about electrical work, but he was follow a master who go out and look at the oven. Hello, hello. He had done it many times before, but because somebody has shown him how to do it. And he just do it, do it, do it, do it. And he sees, and he go another, another place, do it, do it. And this man sees, and then go another place and say, now it's your turn. And this guy, he tried to do it, but he's not filled up with fear now. Because he know there is somebody behind him, in the beside him, who know what he's doing. So if he make a mistake, this guy can say, oh, not that way, the other way, okay. And then he practically do it. And when he have done it one time, he can do another time. And another time, and then he can do it alone. And then in the end, he become like his master. This is discipleship. This is the way Jesus have commanded us to teach. Go out, teach everybody to obey everything I have commanded. The way I did it. Come and follow me. I show you how to do it. But the only place you don't do that today, if you want to be electric or want to be a pain or want to be other things, the only place where we think if you just get a lot of teaching, you suddenly know how to do it, is in the churches. The only place is in the churches. How many people have shown you to heal the sick? How many people have learned you to baptize people in water? Like taking some person in water and you stand behind and then you say, now you baptize. Do you see that? Now you take the next one. I'm standing here. Yes, just do like this. No. How many people have learned you to baptize people with the Holy Spirit? Like now I pray, pray open your eyes, look here. Now this person got baptized with the Holy Spirit, now you do it. You know, just relax, I'm here, just relax. God is there, Holy Spirit is in you, just pray. How many people have learned that? No, many people don't have that. And that's why we hear a lot of knowledge, but when we go from the church and Monday morning, we have to obey what we have heard. We are filled up with fear because suddenly we are alone. And many years I had like about the church, come on, take yourself together. But I saw that it's not just about that. It's about we don't make disciples. And because we don't make disciples the way Jesus do it, we have our people today who's filled up with knowledge, but have almost non-obedience. It's like when you go to a Bible school, what do you learn on the Bible school? You learn about the Word. 
You learn about healing. You know, learn about a lot of things. But what do you do? What do you do in a normal Bible school? You, you do teaching. <laughs> do you practically learn how to heal the sick? Often no. Do you, after you've been finished at the Bible school, have you learned to cast out demons? No. Do you know practically how to start a church? No. Do you practically know how to let people to Christ? No. But you know a lot about it. <laughs> and this is, look at every church. Everything is, is, the focus on every church today is the Sunday meeting and is the teaching. But we can teach and teach and teach and life is not getting changed because it's like seeing yourself in a mirror and go away and you have immediately forgot what you see, saw. You have to put action behind the words. We have to do it the way Jesus did it. Come and follow me and I will make you a fisherman. Come and follow me. So when Jesus in Luke 10 said to his disciples, go out, heal the sick, cast out demons, or heal the sick, preach the gospel, it was not a big step for them. Because they have been with Jesus. They have seen how Jesus actually did it. So because they were part of the discipleship, it was not a big step. And that what was why the first Christian looked like Jesus. Not only in their words, not only in the knowledge, but in the power, in their obedience. Because it was all about discipleship. And now I'm going to share a testimony. Not from how Jesus did it many years ago. But I'm going to share a testimony for what, how I do it. And you can see that this is the answer for the church today. If we do discipleship the way... <laughs> I do it here and many others start to do it. And, and you can read about in my book, The Last Reformation. If we make disciples by showing them how to do it, we are going to see people grow like never before. And we are going to see many lives changed. So a story from just here, half year ago in Denmark. Like half a year ago, uh, uh, let me say, last time I told about a dream I got where I was fishing and I caught some funny fish and God spoke to me through that dream that he wanted to send me to people from other cultures in Denmark. Half a year ago, I got in contact with a guy from Iraq who was living in Denmark. And I felt when I got in contact with him, the dream came to me again and I felt God said, go to him. So I was going to an other end of Denmark to meet a guy from Iraq. His name is Mohammed. He was a Muslim. But Mohammed's story was that he had met a Christian some months before and he had got healed. And the whole thing with Jesus started to work in him. One day he was in the mosque and there was a library in the mosque where there was a lot of books. And he was standing and looking at the library and one book started to shine. And he was like, what is that? And he took the book out, turned it around and it was about Jesus. And he saw it was the only book like in the library about Jesus. So because of that, it started to work in him like, whoa, Jesus, Jesus. And I got in, got in contact with him and he asked me to come to him. So I went there and I met some, uh, take some, took some people with me. I have gotten contact with through Facebook I've never seen before and they also came. And we are seeing like a few people around a coffee table and I was sharing the gospel. After I shared the gospel to them, I, I, Mohammed, he repented, got saved, and another girl repented and got saved. I prayed for them and they experienced the Holy Spirit. And then I said, let's start. Come, follow me. So I took them to a mall because I want to give them the DNA of discipleship from the beginning. That is not about a lot of knowledge, it's about obedience. And they didn't know so much, so I want to start with obedience and then give them more knowledge. Because if you have a lot of knowledge and don't know obedience, the more you know your difficulties is going to be. Because then you think you have to be perfect. But you're never going to be perfect in knowledge. You're going to be perfect in obedience. And this is the problem with the people who study theology today. 
you more years you have been studying theology, you more difficult is it to lead people to Christ and heal the sick and cast out demons and actually obey the word. Because you think it's all about obedience, knowledge instead of obedience. So those people didn't have a lot of knowledge. But I just took the word. Jesus is saying, go out, heal the sick, preach the gospel. Let's go and do it. And I took them to a big mall. And when we came into the mall, the first thing happened was that I saw a girl who was working in a bakery. And I saw her and I felt drawn to her like, I need to talk to her, I need to talk to her, come. So I went to this girl and said, excuse me, I have a funny question. Are you sick? Do you have pain in the body? And she said, no. And I asked her, are you sure you don't have any pain anywhere? And she said, yes, I don't have any pain. And then I told her a little about Jesus and somebody came in. So I had to leave again. So I went out again and I took Mohammed with me and this girl and I said, come follow me. And I found a person who was sick and I said, Mohammed, now you put your hands there and open your eyes, just a short prayer, pray. Mohammed did that and this girl got healed. Why? Because Mohammed prayed in faith. She got healed. He didn't have a lot of knowledge, but he was born again. He had the Holy Spirit. So she got healed by his prayer. And he was not filled up with a lot of fear when he did it. Because he thought, Tom is standing behind me and he knows what he's doing. So if I mess up, he's there to help me. This is discipleship. And she got healed. I found another girl. She was sick. This new girl prayed and she also got healed. So after 10 minutes, both of them, both of them had prayed for people who have got healed. And then I saw the girl in the bakery again. And I want to stare some faith up in her. So I went to her again. Hey, we have just seen two people get healed out there. One with this and one with this. What about you? You don't have anything. And she said, yes, I don't have anything. Are you sure? And she said, yes. So I have asked her five, four times. Somebody came in of her friends in the shop and we talked a little more about Jesus. And I asked her the fifth time, you are sure you don't have anything we could pray for? And she said, yes, I'm sure. And then somebody came in, so I had to go out. So I went out again and I was standing with Mohammed and the girl and suddenly God spoke to me. And I experienced God said to me that there is somebody who had pain right there who's going to get healed. And I just felt it very clear. So I said to Mohammed and, and, and the other girl, hey, that God has just been saying to me that there is somebody who has pain right there who's going to get healed. And I tell it to you now so you know this is God who's speaking. Who is it? Let's look around. And we looked around and I saw this girl who was working in the bakery. And I went in there and said, excuse me, because I felt it was her. <laughs> and I said, excuse me, do you have pain right there? And she said, like, yes, I have. How do you know that? I have pain my whole life. My bones is going through each other. How do you know that? And I said, God spoke to me. I was just out there and God spoke. Can we pray for you? And we pray for her and she got healed. So she has said no five times, but God spoke and revealed that and she got healed. And that, those two persons learned there to heal the sick, learned that God speaks, learned that the Holy Spirit is leading us. And they got that in from the beginning. So what happened after that? We went home again. We sat down. We shared a testimony to his parents what had happened. After we have eaten, I baptized Mohammed, his father, his mother, and this girl. Four people got baptized in the bathtub. And the discipleship started. And a few weeks later, I was together with them again because they live in another end of Denmark. And this time I was together with them, I met with Mohammed, and there was a new guy I have also gotten in contact with. And it was, it's amazing how the Holy Spirit is leading him. This guy had been following me on the website, and he had been praying, God, give me a sign. And he had a bed where there was a hole in the bed. But one day he removed the blanket, and he walked and he turned around, and suddenly he got a shock, because the hole was not a hole anymore. I have a picture here. The hole have changed. And now the hole looked like this. So the hole now looked like a cross in his bed. And when he saw that cross, he was like, whoa. And he got in contact with me. And he came also. And so I was together with this uh, new guy, Mohammed. 
And we have to go to the hospital because there was a woman there who needed prayer. And I have just been on Fair Island having a meeting and this woman was from Fair Island. So somebody asked me to go to the hospital and pray for this woman. She had a wound who could not heal. She had been overrated and the wound could not heal. And because the wound could not heal, she could not go back to Fair Island. She had four kids and she had been waiting, being on the hospital like a half year in Denmark now. And I went there and with Mohammed and a new guy again. And when we came there, immediately we came in, God spoke again. And I, that I felt like God said about her husband. He had problem in the back, the legs is not the same length. And when we came in, the woman said, hey, my problem, husband had problem in the back, the le legs is not the same length. And I was like, yes, sir. Mohammed, you just pray. And Mohammed prayed and this man got healed. Then I pray for the woman about to get healed with the wound. And when I pray, suddenly the Holy Spirit came over her. And she was like, woof, shila ba da 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 and start to speak in tongues. And I was surprised because she was a Baptist and I have not explained her about speaking in tongues. I, I was not praying about her to get baptized with the Holy Spirit. I just prayed to get healed. And she was suddenly speaking in tongues. And she looked at me and I looked at her. And she was praying, Shila Bade. And I said, You are Baptist? And she said, Shila Bade, yes. You don't speak in tongues? Shila Bade, no. You don't know so much about speaking in tongues? Shila Bade, no. You know what you're doing now is speaking in tongues? And she said, Shila, oh, this is speaking in tongues. I said, Yes, this is good. Just continue. Okay. And she closed her eyes and she started continue speaking in tongues. It was really amazing. And she just got baptized with Holy Spirit and spoke in tongues. We went home the day after she sent an SMS to me, text message, where she wrote, Hallelujah, this is so fantastic. The wound is healed. The doctor, the nurse is surprised. She starts to laugh when she checked it. The wound is healed. I'm out. I'm flying home tomorrow. So God have healed her. The day after this, other guy got saved and some other people got saved. And what did we do? We did the same last time. So I said to the new people who got saved, come, let's go out. So we took them out to a mall again to train them, to equip them, to start to obey Jesus. But this time it was not me who did it. I said to the girl who got saved two weeks before, now you take her with you, a new girl who got saved, and you show her the way. So after she had been a Christian two weeks, she took another girl with her out and she showed her how to heal the sick. Then we went to Muhammad's bat, uh, home to Muhammad in his bathtub and we baptized five more people. And I baptized one, the first one. And this girl who got saved two weeks before, she was doing it with me to show, to see how that I did it. And then she baptized the other one alone. Why? Because it's all about discipleship. When Jesus said, go out, make disciples, baptizing them. We are not supposed only to get baptized. We are supposed to baptize other people because we are going to become disciples like Jesus. This is how I did it. For me, I didn't have anybody to show me the way. So first time I healed a sick, it was with a lot of fear. And I've been a Christian six years. Ooh. First time I baptized somebody, I think I've been a Christian eight years and with a lot of fear. I've never tried it before. Because nobody showed me how to do it. So I have to start from the beginning and it was not easy. But those people today, they've been Christian 10 minutes and then they pray for the first. They've been Christian two weeks and then they baptize the first one in water. What do you think going to happen with those people? They are going to get a life where they don't have the same fear the church have today. Where they know it's all about reading and obedience. Read the word, act on the word. Do the word, do the word, do the word. They just do it. And they got into that mindset from the beginning. And this is so amazing what God is doing. Two weeks after I was been, I, I've been there. I heard a strong testimony because one of them know a Christian who was dying of cancer. He was at the hospital and the people there 
in the hospital have asked him, where do you want to die? Do you want to die at home or in the hospital? And he had told them, I want to die here. Because they could not do any more, so he was ready to die at the hospital. But Mohammed, this new girl who got saved, uh, and, and, and a boy who got saved, they went to the hospital. They just went there. Because they didn't know anything else, so they, they didn't have the same fear, so they just went to the hospital. Three people who have been saved some few weeks, in a few days and few weeks, laid their hands on him and prayed. And then they went home. And this man, the day after they prayed, he heard a voice said, first day of healing. And he was like, first day of healing? What is this? Second day, he heard a voice again, second day of healing. Second day of healing, what is this? Third day, he heard a voice, healing fulfilled. And then he was healed. There was no more cancer in his body. He's healed, he's out, he's home now, and the doctor is surprised. And this is not the first person the last month who have got healed of cancer through these people. And this is exploding now. They're just doing it. And I see that all over the place. When people start with discipleship, and learn, not by knowledge only, but learn the way Jesus did it. Come and follow me and I show you how to do it. Then I see people today who have been Christian one month, but they heal and say, cast out demons, let people to Christ. They hear from God. They do what we read in the book of Acts. But I see in churches people who have been sitting there 30, 40 years, who have been on Bible school, who have a lot of knowledge and they are sitting there and knowing exactly how to do it, but they don't do it. That's why I don't want to discuss theology with many people. I want to see in their life that they have understood what it's all about. Jesus didn't say, go out, heal the sick. De Jesus didn't say, go make disciples. So we should write a book about it and make theology about it. So we can write 10 different ways we could do it. Like my girls, when I say clean the room. No, he said it because he wanted to be done. He said it. S not so we can memorize it. He said it so we should obey it and do it. And when we act on it and do it, then our life is getting changed. Because then we don't forget the word. Like I have something here. This is from my book, The Last Reformation. We remember 10% of what we read, 20% of what we hear, 30% of what we see, 50% of what we hear and see, 7% of what we say ourselves, and 90% of what we do ourselves. And that's why I show things, because I want you to see and hear. But many of the things you're still going to forget. But when you actually do it yourself, when you have learned to do it, when you have experienced it on your own body, not only sitting in a meeting, listening, but experience it. You are not going to forget it. No. And you're going to get transformed. Because the word suddenly become life in you. The book is not only theology anymore. Now, now it's life. Jesus didn't come with theology. He came with life. So you don't need more knowledge. Maybe some of you do, of course, it's good. But you need to sit action of what you already know. To be honest, it's a problem. I move this. It's a problem if your knowledge is there and your obedience is there. Because God is going to judge us, not out of our knowledge, but out of our, our obedience. And him who has been trusted much is going to be expected much of. If you have a lot of knowledge and you don't obey what you know, then you have a problem. It's better to know less and then act on what you know than get a lot of knowledge and don't act on it. So it's not so much about knowledge, it's about obedience. Where are your obedience? Is your obedience down here or are your obedience some there beside your knowledge? It should be like that. But I know 
the problem, a lot of fear. And I know when I tell this story with Muhammad and other people and the way we do it, everybody will be like, oh, Torben, show me. I, I want to learn that way. But I cannot take everybody and train everybody. But I can train some people who can train other people who can train other people. But I want to say, we don't have any excuse. We cannot stand in front of God one day and say, God, the church was built on a wrong foundation, so there was no discipleship in the church anymore. There was only a lot of teaching, a lot of knowledge. And because of that, I didn't obey what you called me to. We don't have any excuse. Like me, nobody showed me the way. And yes, I have problem with fear, like every other. And I learned there was only one way to overcome my fear, is to stand up in faith and act on it. Because when I've done it one time, the fear don't have any hole in me anymore because then I know I can do it again and I can do it again and I can do it again. So I want to say that it's so much easier with discipleship and discipleship is the answer for the church today. And, and, and that's why I believe in small groups where we are together and train and do things. That's why we need to not only meet on Sunday, we need to have an everyday life where we equip and disciple new people. And you have to disciple new people. What you have learned already, you have to show other people how to do it. Because this is the way forward for the church that we make disciples. So this is what I'm going to teach about this time. Uh, again, remember the two mirror. If my Bible school, if this teaching here is only going to give you knowledge, you are not going to get changed. It's not going to help you the way you want it to help you. You need yourself to seek, set action about, behind the words. You need to act on it. And when you act on it, this is where you're getting changed. Because there the word become life for your spirit. There the word go in and change your life. This is where you live. Whoa, this is real. This is not theology. This is real. This is real. And it is real. But before you can experience this is real, you have to act on the word. Do like the man in the video from India. He just went out and did it. And when he did that, suddenly everything became real to him in a new way. And I wish, wish everybody would do that. Just take the first step. Act on the word. This is what we need to do. Act on the word. I'm going to end this video with a song my wife has written. Uh, it's about fear that we have to come away from our fear. Because fear is the biggest problem in the churches today. Because we have heard a lot, but nobody has shown us. But again, it's no excuse. And, 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 and we have to just take ourselves together somehow. I know it's not easy. But then set obedience behind what we already know. We have to take one step out in faith and act on the word. And if you really cannot do it, then jump in the car. Go to somebody who do it, who can show you the way. Do what you need to do to take the first step over this step of fear and then start to act on the word. Find somebody. If you are in a church where nobody can show you, find another place where there is some people. If somebody can show you how to do that, then do this with him. Somebody there who can show you other things, then let him show you. Somebody there who can train you in other ways, then let him train you. You don't have to be dependent that it have to be that church on that Sunday. No, you have to do what you need to do to come into the life. And again, when we do discipleship, we will become like our master. This is all about becoming like Jesus. When we get trained by doing one step at a time, we will become like Jesus. And next time I'm going to talk about healing, how to heal the sick. And then I'm going to kickstart you next time again and train you so you can get kickstarted and learn to heal the sick. And then one step at a time, discipleship, discipleship. And of course, I wish that everybody of you could be together with me and go out and actually see how we do it. Because this is the best way 
but we don't have that right now. I, I cannot take everybody of you with me. So what I can do is I can make a lot of teaching where I show things and then I can make my videos where in the video you show how people do it. And doing those videos and doing this teaching, people somehow overcome their fear and people start to do it. And I believe you can also start to do it. I believe doing this teaching and doing the Bible school and the videos we have in Bible school, you can overcome the fear in your life. And there is no answer, other answer you need to do it. Because if you don't act on the word, the word is never going to be alive in you. If you don't act on it, if you don't go out and do what Jesus has said, you're going to deceive yourself because there's not going to happen that change in your life you want it to have it. So it was the teaching this time. I hope you get a lot up out of it. And now you're going to hear a song of my wife about fear. Don't fear is the name. And it's a song she has written. And listen to the words. Let the word somehow set you free. And before she's going to sing, I just want to pray. God, I pray for everybody who's seen this video. I pray that you will help them taking some step in faith. You're going to help them not only to receive a lot of knowledge, but they're going to experience and do obedience. They're going to be obedient to the knowledge they already have, God. Help them, God. Help them, God. I pray that discipleship is going to come back to the church again, God. Jesus, we will do it the way you do it. So people are going to grow. We are going to make disciples. Oh, I pray for everybody who sees this video that you are going to set them free from their fear and they are going to not deceive themselves, but they are going to act on what they already know, God. In the name of Jesus. Amen. When you
your hand. 